I am Dr. Sashank Prabhu. That doctor is because I have done my MBBS. Uh, and then I did my MBA from FMS Delhi. I am a CAT 100 percentileer, a multiple time CET rank 1 and a multiple time IFT 100 percentileer. Right. Uh, at IMS, I am the uh, National Chief Mentor for Quant and LRDI. So some of you would be uh, uh, seeing me for in their, let's say, SIMCAD analysis or SIMCAD video solutions or uh, masterclass sessions, right? Sessions that we do across a broad audience. So uh, that is basically where I feature. Um, so that is my job at IMS, right? I, I sort of uh, um, oversee the quant and LRDI uh, material that you get or the tests that you take. So, right? so that is basically what I look at, right? Uh, I have also had work experience across uh, companies like uh, pagalguy.com so I, I am sure some of you would have heard of pagalguy so i used to be an editor content manager way back in 2010 11 right so that time i, I worked with pagalguy for a year before my mba uh, after my mba i worked with this organization called itc so i used to handle um, sales and distribution of personal care and home care products for um, andhra pradesh right so that was what i was uh, involved with so i did that for a couple of years then i got full time into mentorship and uh, educating people yeah so to say so i started my own uh, venture it was called learning roots um, and then we sort of got absorbed by ims in a way right uh, and so i have been with ims for the last two and a half years now more than two and a half years now so that has been my journey so at any point in time if someone is interested in entrepreneurship marketing let's say for example or obviously a test strategy right so all these things that are there um, if you have any doubts any queries you can just get back um, right? i have also added my coordinates uh, on the end slide uh, wherein i have put my linkedin profile i have put my mail id i have also put my goodreads profile for those of you who want to follow me and uh, I have also uh, put my Quora profile so that you can read some of the answers that I would have read. Okay. Now, before we start with the session, there is one small announcement that we generally make, right? Uh, it is regarding the zero fee preparation program. So at IMS, of course, you have to understand what exactly is our pedagogy, uh, how do we conduct these live sessions, what kind of interaction is fostered in these live sessions. So obviously, this session that we are going to have today is going to be pretty interactive. Uh, so if you have a query, you simply put it in the chat box and I will keep it on throughout the session so that I can address those queries. But how do, how do things work in case of a live session? So to get exposure to those things, to experience what a SIMCAT feels like, uh, to look at the concept videos that are there, right? We have a zero fee program wherein you just enroll by signing up on the link uh, that you have and you can experience the entire pedagogy in part of course, right? So uh, zero fee program, you will have access to these things. So you'll have some five hours of concept videos, um, 300 or questions that you will have, three sessions that you will have, where you will be able to see what exactly happens in a live session at IMS. Uh, sectional tests you get. So one test per section is what you are going to get. Three full length mocks, right? Um, out of which I think one will be a CAT mock and there will be a couple more to help you understand the various tests that exist and uh, eight plus hours of career mentorship series so again um, how what to uh, which specialization to pursue what are kind of opportunities lie in the industry once you are done with your mba as well so that you should you do get to work in a streamlined manner you don't go here and there and you meander and uh, end up doing something that one you might not be able to justify and two you might not especially be proud of right it involves a significant investment uh, if you look at it so this is what you get so you can uh, sign up for our zero fee programs and uh, just just have a look at the entire ecosystem right now we will start with the uh, session so the agenda is very simple uh, we will start with the end in mind so we'll just try to build the mindset uh, when it comes to cracking these tests and you have to just ask yourself these questions that i will be asking you uh, and that will tell you if you are a good candidate or not, if you have the, if you are in the right frame of mind or not, and if you are not, then you have to develop it. Right? That is, there is no alternative. You can't say that okay, I will not do this. I will only memorize formulas, go to the exam, and do the math and verbal part, and come back. No, that is not going to happen. Then I will give you a short overview of uh, what CAT 2020 looked like. Right? Uh, the top institutes and tests will be a couple of slides. 
uh, what do toppers do what do people who perform really well at these tests do differently compared to the uh, aam janta so to say yeah so what do these people do differently that is what we will look at that's just one slide then you have section wise prep resources so i'll just be i'll be covering each and every section um, again i'll just try to give you a, a hawk eye of um, a hawk eye view of each um, Uh, section what all things are there in that particular section what all resources can you use outside of your normal resources that you would be getting as a part of ims right so we will focus on those things then what to do next that is basically the last part uh, we'll talk about timelines in general and specific timelines and then finally there is some time for q and a that I have there, right uh, at any point in time if you are not able to understand something that i am saying or you need more clarity you have a doubt uh please feel free to put your query in the chat box and i will address that query right away if it is relevant to this slide if it is not then we will take it towards the end right uh, as i had mentioned earlier i have also put my mail id towards the end of the ppt so in case there is something uh, that you are not clear about maybe two days later or three days later uh, you can just drop me a mail uh, i'll get back to you right so that is going to be the agenda of the day so let's start with the end in mind now uh, what kind of what kind of a candidate do you think will crack the cat right so all of you would have heard a lot of stories some of you might have had friends seniors relatives you might have uh, read and uh, listened to or uh, sort of seen accounts of people who have done well at the cat people who are 99 percentileers people who got into i am amdabad people who um, got into really good colleges right people who have had brilliant profiles you have you could have you would have seen all these kind of people right uh, what is the thing that binds all these people right so if you look at any cat topper uh, the one thing that these people will have which maybe a, a, a generic aspirant doesn't is that uh, the the person will be inherently curious you will always go beyond your mandate you will not say that okay today is geometry triangles ka test what i will do is i will just mug up those 10 formulas that were taught in the class and i will basically go and kill the test now those days are over right uh, if you were appearing for a content heavy test wherein you had to memorize a lot of things understand or remember a lot of concepts and then apply them uh, without any thought then you would could have benefited with this approach wherein you have a defined syllabus you will just go ahead do your syllabus end of the story you are sorted but in this case it's not exactly going to be one syllabus there is no one reference book that exists there is no fixed syllabus that exists there is no official guide that exists which might be true in case of a gmat or in case of an nmat let's say for example wherein you have official guides but in case of the cat you don't really have an og which will say that okay you refer to this and that is basically what you are expected to know no you have to refer to past year papers you have to listen to people's experiences you have to uh, incorporate as many things as you can right into your preparation so beginning with the end in mind you have to be very good at asking the why of things so again i am sure all of you know the answers to many of these questions but let's let's give it a try why do we need to add the digits to figure out divisibility by 9 so i'm sure that everyone here knows that if you want to figure out whether a number is divisible by 9 or not and i am not expecting an answer here okay uh, so it's okay if you don't know and even if you know brilliant you can just put it in the chat box if you know so not a problem but uh, if you want to figure out whether a number is divisible by 9 or not let's say i ask you whether 2763 is divisible by 9 or not then i am sure many of you will remember all of you will know that to figure out whether a number is divisible by 9 or not you have to simply add the digits and keep on doing this till the time you get a single digit number right or you can simply add the digits and see whether the sum that you have got is divisible by 9 or not now the more important question is why do we need to do that why can't we just add the last three digits and say that the number is divisible by 9 or last two digits and say that the number is divisible by 9 it works for four it works for 25 why can't it work for 9 right so these kind of things are there but we haven't studied these things yeah rohit correct sum of all the numbers right uh, again the point is why do we do it? so unless you understand the why of things you will not be able to apply the concept you will know when to just plug in the concept so plugging in a concept and application of a concept are two different things right you will not be able to apply that said concept 
let's go one step further i am sure some of you know why you divide a number by why you divide the sum of digits by 9 but we also have a divisibility test for 11 so whenever we are dividing a number by 11 what do we do we take all the odd placed digits we add them we get a sum we then add all the even placed digits we add them we get another sum we take the difference between these two sums right and that difference should be divisible by 11 if this difference is not divisible by 11 then the original number will not be divisible by 11 as simple as that so that is how we figure out divisibility by 11 but why do we do this why can't we simply take the number formed by the last three digits subtract it from the rest of the number and figure out whether it's divisible by 11 or not now mind you the method that i mentioned is also a test of divisibility by 11. last three digits subtract the final answer should be divisible by 11. right but then again why do we use these methods why is this addition of odd digits subtraction of odd digits uh, thing important now once you explore this bit you will understand that there is an underlying concept of negative remainders which might not have been taught to you in school right or you might not remember from your school days so there is this concept of negative remainders unless you understand negative remainders it will be very difficult for you to understand lcm and hcf let's say for example or basic division questions that you get from numbers so that is basically how you progress you take a concept you dig deeper understand what it is about and then you apply it in other places so lcm itself generally has got nothing to do with test of divisibility by 11 but because you have understood divisibility test by 11 and 9 you know what positive and negative remainders are you can apply those concepts okay now let's go to verbal a bit of verbal. what do you mean by this word brobding nagian has anyone heard of this word brobding nagian yeah some of you know this good Achha. no none of you okay so basically i'll give you one small uh, anecdote uh, i am sure most of you know about this series called the big bang theory right now there was this episode in the big bang theory way back uh, in which sheldon enters a room and Raj is sitting inside the room. There are two characters. And he sees a big table. And he just exclaims, what is this Brobding Nagian monstrosity? Now, context say you will be able to understand what is Brobding Nagian. Right? Now, someone who looks at this scene will simply laugh it off and say that, okay, this was a funny instance. What is this big table doing in this small room? Right? But the curious person will go and search what this Brobding Nagian is all about and why is this, why does this word exist? It has got no visible roots, right? Brobding Nagian is not similar to any other word that you would have heard. So what is this Brobding Nagian? Right? Now, once you explore a bit, you will figure out that this word is related to something that you know of. And I'm sure many of you would have heard of this thing and would have forgotten as well, this thing called Gulliver's Travels. Right? I'm sure all of you have heard of this Thing called Gulliver's Travels, right? Lilliput. I'm sure some of you will be able to make sense of this. So Gulliver is a person who basically goes to this island called Lilliput, right? And when this person reaches this island Lilliput, he sees that all those people who are well, who are uh, inhabitants of that island are very tiny compared to the size of Gulliver. Now whatever Gulliver does resolves their conflict. End of the story. Whatever happens. After that, what happens? Gulliver goes to another island. And this island is called Brobding Nag. Right? So Brobding Nag is the name of the island. And you might have guessed it. What happens at Brobding Nag? Brobding Nag may the equation gets reversed. Now Gulliver is basically tiny and everyone else is huge. That is Brobding. Brobding Nag. Something that is huge. Right? So that is basically the depth to which you might want to go if you want to memorize words, if you want to improve your vocabulary. So all the references are right in front of you. I have not spoken about a Hindu editorial or uh, some other economist or HBR or something. I'm just talking about Big Bang Theory, right? Uh, and I'm sure that if you dig deeper into the kind of series that you're watching, the kind of books that you're reading, the kind of movies that you're watching, I'm sure you will come across a lot of pop culture references, a lot of words from which you can dig deeper and understand a lot more things. Okay, let's look at the next one. Right? Uh, have you heard one or many of these names? Kakuro, Hitori, bulls and cows, not those animals, but yes, bulls and cows together. Uh, Kakurasu, Tower of Hanoi, 
right? So some of you would have heard of some of these. Yeah, Mishpreet, yes. So, uh, yeah. Ipshita also, right? So some of you would have heard of these things. For those who haven't, please try to understand what these things are. These are all nice logical puzzles that you get. Right? Tower of Hanoi, yes, Abhishek. I don't know if you have ever seen this movie called Planet of the Apes, but uh, the very first movie, Planet of the Apes, um, the I think it was called what? Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So in that, the very first sequence is basically a monkey arranging those rings on that uh, pole that you have, right? Uh, that is basically Tower of Hanoi. So you would have all played this game as a kid, or you would have at least seen it. There, there are a lot of rings, large, smaller, 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 smallest. And you have to transfer everything from one pole to the other, right? That is Tower of Hanoi. So all these things are, or all these names are of uh, logical reasoning puzzles. Uh, again, if you get better at these puzzles, you will see applications of these puzzles in your actual CAT sets. So if you look at what CAT, uh, yeah, there is a computer programming question related to Tower of Hanoi. Yes, Saurabh. It's a very popular puzzle. There is an algorithm involved. So uh, definitely it is something that can be computed. And most of, most of these have algorithms involved. Uh, the better you get at these puzzles, the better algorithms you will build in your head, right? So uh, all these are puzzles that you might want to explore, that you might want to check out. And uh, you will see applications of these puzzles when it comes to your logical reasoning questions, right? Uh, some of the apps that you might or might not have heard of, uh, Lumosity, Elevate, 2048, Sudoku, Minesweeper, Quick Brain, Number Games, right? So I have given some alternatives towards the end as well. Uh, when it comes to section wise resources, but again, these are the apps that might help you build your logical reason, right? So, again, uh, understanding these things does not take a lot of effort, it does not take a lot of uh, time, it just takes a bit of curiosity, right? If you're curious about what uh, how are things uh, or what do people do around you, then I think you will end up doing a better job. Otherwise, if you just think of it as a maths and English test, then I don't think it's going to end very well right uh, at some point in time after a couple of months you are bound to get bored because it is exactly the same thing that you would have done in your 8 9 10 standard but tougher and more competitive right uh, so that is basically how things are going to go so unless you develop um, a curious nature it's going to be difficult for you to perform at an optimum level you will do well but if you uh, want to perform at the level that is that you consider to be optimum for yourself then it's going to be slightly difficult if you are not curious about things that are around you. Okay, so I hope the agenda is clear. Uh, it's fairly uh, straightforward to understand. Yeah. So let's look at what CAT 20 looked like. So again, I'm sure many of you would have seen this already and uh, you would know what CAT looked like. For those of you who don't know, I'll just give you a short overview. So CAT 20 had three slots, 76 questions, three sections. So three slots, meaning there was one slot of two hours in the morning. Um, I believe it was what 9 to 11, let's say. One slot was in the afternoon, 12 30, 2 30, let's say, for example. One in the evening, 4 to 6, let's say. Okay. I'm just giving you random timings. Uh, they might be close to reality, but yes, there, it was conducted in three different slots. Each slot had 76 different questions, right? They didn't repeat the questions from morning to afternoon to evening. There were three sections in each slot that we can see uh, below uh, verbal ability, reading comprehension data interpretation and logical reasoning and quantitative ability right uh, in general verbal logic and maths each section had 40 minutes allotted to it and you had to take these sections in the predefined order so whenever you start the test you will start with verbal ability and reading comprehension that is basically what happened right you had to solve whatever you can out of these 26 questions in 40 minutes if you finished answering all these questions in 30 minutes, you would not have been able to use those 10 minutes elsewhere. You had to wait till the timer ran out and then you could start the next section or you were forced to start the next section. It basically plays on a loop, right? So 26 questions, 40 minutes, the first section. The next section would definitely be data interpretation. <coughs> Sorry. The next section would definitely be DI and LR, logical reasoning. Again, 24 questions to be solved in the next 40 minutes and then the next section quantitative ability maths to be solved in the next 40 minutes. So these were the three sections that you had, you had to proceed in that same order. Now the marking scheme, 
plus 3 minus 1 for MCQ questions. So out of 76, 57, 75% of the test comprised of MCQ. MCQ meaning multiple choice questions. You had multiple choices out of which you had to choose one option. So there was only one correct option. The remaining 19 questions were what we call theta. Theta questions are type in the answer. Right. So you will be given a text box below a question. If your answer is 120, you will just write 120 or you will just click 120 from the number pad and save your answer. That's it. You don't have any options for these questions. Now, because these questions don't have any options, it becomes very difficult for you to validate whether your response is right or wrong. You don't know whether I have answered it correctly or incorrectly. Right. So to give you some sort of an advantage, there is no negative marking for data questions. So MCQs can there, if you select a wrong answer, you get minus one. If you select a right answer, you get plus three. In case of theta questions, even if you type the wrong answer, you are not going to invite any penalty. You will get zero. But if you get the right answer, you're going to get a plus three. So whenever you see a theta question, even if you don't know anything about that particular question, it is advised that you mark something, you write something and save your answer. Just in case if it's right, you might get free marks. Right. So that is basically what happens in case of MCQs and TTAs. Uh, VARC had 26 questions. DILR had 24 questions. QA had 26 questions. Now, again, depending on the context, this year's things may or may not change. Um, so again, it depends on what the scenario is when we reach a later point in time. But last year, this had to happen because of social distancing norms, because of the prevalent situation. Right. They had to have a lot of lot more centers compared to what they used to have earlier. And they have to conduct it across three slots instead of two slots. That is why 40 minutes per section. Otherwise, in a normal non-COVID year, uh, the test used to be of three hours, one hour per section. Right. You also have an on-screen calculator. But before you start rejoicing, uh, this on-screen calculator is practically useless because you have to click all the numbers. And you know the uh, brilliant infrastructure of all the computer labs that our colleges have. Right. So you might end up uh, being at a lab that does not have the best of IT infrastructure in terms of the mice that are there. And you might end up uh, making a mess of it. Right. Plus, we, we feel that there is an on screen calculator. So we tend to rely a bit more on that. Um, somehow we lose our uh, focus because every time you calculate, you are not doing anything but just focusing on the number in front of you. Right. Whereas if you just write down things, you are going ahead with the. So the on screen calculator exists. Uh, but the problem is one, it exists only at the CAT. For the other tests, you will have to use manual calculation. And uh, of course, it's not state of the art. So you will not be able to use the, the buttons on your uh, uh, keyboard, right? So that is going to be an issue. So make sure that you are um, good or well versed with your calculations when you take the CAT. And also, CAT does not test your calculation to a large degree. So um, again, it's not a test of. Uh, understanding what what is the exact value of 2 raised to 20. Right? Nobody is going to ask you that question. So don't worry about those kind of questions. All right. Now let's look at uh, what happened in terms of the marks. So as we saw, 76 questions plus 3 marks for every correct answer that you get. So the maximum score that you could have got was 228, 76 into 3. Now out of 228, if you got these scores, then you would have ended up at these percentiles. Now, a percentile is nothing but a measure of the percentage of the population whom you have outscored. So 80 percentile basically means that you have defeated 80 percent of the population. If 2 lakh people or if 2 lakh 50,000 people are appearing for the GATT, then you have defeated 2 lakh of the population. So you are in the top 50,000. That is what it means. Big number, but yes, that's what it means. 99th percentile means that you have defeated everyone but 1% of the population, meaning that you are in the 99th percentile. So out of 2,50,000 people, you are in the top 2,500. That is basically 99th percentile. 100 percentile is sort of a misnomer. There cannot be a 100 percentile because you cannot defeat the entirety of the test taking population because it also includes you. Right? You can't defeat everyone, including yourself. Right. So 100 percentile is a rounding error, so to say, right? Uh, what they do is they generally uh, sort of uh, have your percentiles that are significant up to two digits after the decimal. So there will be a 99.98, 99.99 and 100. 
So whoever is 99.995 or above gets a hundred percent. So that's how your hundred percentile works. Now, if you look at the scores that correspond to these percentiles, right? There are generally three levels that I recommend people see. One is one fourth of the overall score. The second is one third of the overall score and half of the overall score. And these numbers are significant as the volume of the test increases. So if you look at a three hour test, right? One fourth or 25% of the total marks will almost invariably correspond to 80th percentile. 75 out of 300. 100 out of 300 or one third of the total marks will correspond to the 90th percentile, almost always. And if you look at the 99th percentile, it will be one by two, half of the overall score, 150 out of 300. Now, last year, because the test was compressed, we always tend to be under a lot of stress when the timings are compressed. And the same thing showed last year as well. So if you look at the overall score 228, Right. If you look at the milestones that we had, 80th percentile was 49 out of 228. 49 out of 228 was way less than the 25 percent mark, one fourth mark. Right. So that was where your 80th percentile uh, like 90th percentile was at 63 marks out of 228. Now, what is 63? 63 is very close to 25 percent of the overall score. Right, 95th percentile was one third of the overall score, 77 marks, slightly more than one third. 99th percentile was 102, right, which is not 50% of 228, which is way less than 50% of 228. It's what 45% of 228, right? So that is basically where these milestones uh, uh, were last year. So if you look at it again, a change of one mark will increase your percentile by five. Change of 13 marks, 5 percentile, 14 marks, 5 percentile, 15 marks, 3 percentile, 10 marks, 1 percentile, 61 marks, 1 percentile, right? So this will tell you that it is a nice curve, bell curve that you get, wherein people who are bad will be extremely bad, people who are good will be extremely good, and you lie somewhere in the middle. And obviously, some of you can be extremely bad or extremely good as well, right? So the point is, as you progress, you will see that it's very easy to progress. It's very easy to go from 80 to 85 percent. Lord, it's one mark, right? You don't mark one answer incorrectly. You get five more percent. But as you go ahead from 85 to 90, it becomes tougher. 90 to 95, more or less same amount of toughness. 95 to 98. Now you are increasing your score by 15 marks, but your percentile is increasing by only three. 90 to 99, you are increasing your score by 10 marks now, but your increase in percentile is by only one. And from 99 to 100 is going to be a different story altogether, right? So this is basically how things go. Initially, you will be pumped up. You will be doing a lot of correct things, nice things. You will rise to some level, but then again, you will plateau. And that is basically where you have to be comfortable. You have to be confident about your ability. You have to know how exactly to improve at each step. Right? That is why preparation comes into the picture. Because if you look at it, it's an IQ test at the end of the day, right? Uh, everybody inherently knows how to solve maths, how to solve puzzles, how to solve verbal ability questions. Anyone who has done that and standard will know how to solve these three questions or three question types. The point is, why do you need assistance to solve these questions? Because it is that competitive. Right. So uh, as is the case with a lot of things, uh, even cat preparation has become professional in nature. Right. Uh, you can no longer say that you are extremely passionate about cricket or football and just go and play. That is not going to work. You have to work on your mental fitness. You have to work on your physical fitness. You have to work on strategy. You have to work on understanding your opponents. Right? All those things come into the picture. So that is basically where an external influence helps. Okay. Now, what all are the top institutes that are there? Yeah, Abhishek, this is data for 2020. Okay. So institutes, again, there are quite a few institutes. Uh, so older IIMs, IITs, um, and the like, newer IIMs, baby IIMs, you would have heard all these names, right? Uh, so if you look at your uh, IMS brochure, all these are categorized as creme de la creme, A++, A institutes, B institutes, B++ institutes, right? So all those categorizations are there. Uh, you might want to explore this list on your own, right? So I will read, I will uh, leave this to the reader to make sense of. But again, uh, overall, if you look at it, these four bullets represent the four strata in which we can divide these institutes. Now, I'm not saying that a TIS is worse than an IFT. 
is not what I'm trying to say. But yes, if you look at the cutoffs, if you look at the kind of people, the number of people who are interested in these institutes, you will see that there is a nice segregation that exists. So the older IIMs, uh, Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta, Lucknow, Indore, Koi Code, FMS Delhi, XLRI, Jamshedpur, SPJMR, let's say, JBIMS, IFT, MDI, all these colleges. ISB is a separate story altogether, but all these colleges will invite the top 1% or top 2% of the test takers generally. Right. So if you look at the cutoffs for ABC, LIK, depending on your profile, they will almost invariably be in the 99s. Lower 99s, mid 99s, more or less. Unless you have an exceptional profile, then obviously they will make an exception as well. But generally, your cutoffs will be somewhere in the 99s. If you look at the IITs, let's say if you look at IIT Delhi, IIT Madras, IIT KGP, then their cutoffs would be somewhere in the mid 90s or even early 90s in some cases. Newer IIMs will uh, accept your uh, or will call you for an interview even if you are at a 96, 97 kind of a percentage. Right? NMIMS, SIBM, SCMHRD will call you if you are at the 95th or percentile, 97th percentile in their tests. That is why they are rated slightly below. The latest IIMs that are there, so Amritsar, Bodhgaya, Jammu, Nagpur, Sirmaur, Sambalpur, Vizag, all these IIMs that are that have recently come up, obviously they are not very well established at the moment. So there are very few takers for these institutes. People prefer older non-IM institutes over the baby IIMs or the latest IIMs. That we, right? So again, you might want to take a call as you go ahead. Then you also have colleges around that 90th percentile, 85th percentile, like let's say an IMT, an IMI, Great Lakes, XIMB, and all those colleges. Right? So a lot of colleges will uh, accept your uh, application even if you are around that 90th, 92nd percentile. And all these are decent colleges. I'm not saying these are bad colleges. Uh, but of course, you have to understand what your limitations are. You have to understand what you are capable of. Uh, you can't lie to yourself. You can build castles in the air, yes, but you can't lie to yourself at the end of the day. So make sure that you are taking an informed decision of which colleges to apply, which colleges to not apply to, right? Uh, and then only you go ahead with that decision. Otherwise, it's going to be slightly disastrous. Right? So that is the list of institutes. How do the toppers do it? Right now, so many things have happened. So obviously, they read a lot. The next segment will almost exclusively uh, be on reading habits. What all things should you read? What all things should you go through? Right? That is basically going to be the key to success. So it's not just about toppers. It's about top managers. So you look, you look at uh, any of the interviews of the CEOs, right? You will hardly find someone who is not able to make sense of things, right? You will see many impressive CEOs. You will see book lists that are floated by CEOs. So Bill Gates uh, frequently releases uh, the list of books that he is reading or the book, list of books that he enjoyed reading, right? Uh, Microsoft does it, right? So these people or these organizations will come up with lists, right? Because they are well read. Right. You listen to a podcast of someone who is an industry leader and you will know that these people are well read. And even if they aren't, again, there, there are things that uh, they will try to learn actively. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of this, but I again got it from one of my students. Uh, there is this YouTuber called Ankur Variku. I don't know some of you would have uh, heard of him. right? Uh, again, the person is an entrepreneur is uh, uh, a motivational speaker, is an investor and all those things. But then again, uh, he learns a few things, he teaches a few things to people. Right? And uh, there, there are a lot of people who want to digest that kind of knowledge. Right? So, where, whichever level you reach, right, you will always find people who are making sense. Right? I don't know how many of you have heard of Kunal Shah, but there was an, uh, uh, an interesting podcast that I listened to. Right? You might want to indulge yourself in these kind of activities. Right? Yeah. Good, Ipshita, good to know. So obviously you have to read a lot. You have to understand what are the things that are going on around you. You have to try to make sense of things and it's not very difficult. It's very easy to do that. Right. Uh, you have to focus more on the how than on the what. So on the first slide, we saw that we, we can't really just mug up content. Right? It's not going to lead anywhere. Right. Uh, you have to focus on the how. You have to figure out the why of things, the how of things. Then just you know, understanding what it is. Just tell me what it is. I just mug it up. I'll just uh, again, regurgitate and that will basically be the end of it, right? That is basically how people uh, do things, which you should not. So whenever someone asks you why MBA, write an SOP, don't Google sample SOPs, 
try to write something that comes to your mind you might sound stupid it's okay to sound stupid it's worse to copy right so whenever you are getting or whenever you are getting challenged or whenever you feel that it's not you are going out of your comfort zone try to explore what can happen right try to do things on your own instead of googling everything right? uh, learn concepts quickly and efficiently very important uh, you are at that stage wherein every minute is important every day is important you can't really say that okay i will take a nice holiday in october and then i'll do well at the cat it's very difficult to see that happening i'm sure some people will do that as well but it's very difficult you are not improving your chances by doing that activity right uh, you have to learn your concepts quickly and efficiently i will share a timeline which will say that you have to be done with a lot of things by mid september right uh, so that is basically the pace at which you are expected to grow considering that you are starting uh, towards the end game right uh, you can always do well but you have to be super efficient right uh, repetition retention recall so again I, i was reading this book as i mentioned earlier called atomic habits and uh, repetition helps right uh, even when you are trying to learn a song let's say for example you listen to a song you find it to be catchy now uh, the songs that you find catchy that there is some science to it by the way right uh, how do people make catchy songs they will take a phrase they will keep on repeating it right rhyming also is a form of repetition in a way right you will feel you will figure out that the songs or the poems that you remember the best are the ones that rhyme the most or that have repetition of a particular element right that is basically how people learn things similarly retention you also have to retain things right the more you repeat the better you retain and the better you retain the better it the easier is it for you to recall things so again that is not exactly a, a test of only application obviously you have to have decent memory to crack the test right you need to remember a lot of formulas you need to remember a lot of techniques you need to remember a lot of scenarios and then go ahead and uh, uh, apply them during the test right so that is repetition retention and recall explore alternative techniques and link interlinkages a lot of people say that shortcuts i want to learn shortcuts mujhe shortcuts chahiye the more shortcuts i know the better off i will be a lot of people design their programs uh, uh, keeping those shortcuts in mind we will teach only shortcuts but the problem is you might know how to apply a shortcut but you don't know the science behind it there will be a situation wherein you will not be able to apply that shortcut every shortcut has a caveat it will be applicable only in a given context so we are running this nice series on youtube i don't know how many of you have checked it out it's called best of cat uh, wherein there are three of us so amit sir is there param sir is there i am there so the three of us have taken uh, past cat questions and we try to solve those questions using in interesting means it's a playlist on youtube you might want to check it out and we plan to do it till the day of the cat right so that is basically what we are running at the moment uh, wherein we explore alternative techniques interlinkages so some of those questions if you just go and look at them you will figure out you will have that aha moment wherein okay this concept can be applied here as well oh we didn't know that allegation could be applied in a partnership question right that kind of a thing so you have to be on the uh, you have to be on your toes and try to explore alternative techniques and linkages for most of the questions that you come to, come across right uh, and again the last thing you have to prep because you want to not because you need to right it's not an obligation at the end of the day nobody is forcing you to take the cat there are a lot of ways in which you can earn a lot more money right you get into a b school there is no guarantee that you are going to earn x amount for the rest of your life no right people only look at their starting salaries they don't know where those salaries can go or how these salaries increase year in and year out right uh, a lot of you might have been attracted towards going for an mba because there is a big salary component involved right uh, which is a fair enough motivation i'm not saying it's a bad motivation but of course you want to grow beyond that you need to really enjoy the subjects that you are studying you can't really make it a drab affair wherein you are just turning up and solving questions mechanically because of that one goal that you have in your head of cracking a beast right it doesn't work that way you have to want to do something you will have to uh, feel happy when you are doing that thing. otherwise it's not going to help you or not right so there is no obligation you always have an out uh, when it comes to preparing for the cat uh, but make sure that you are in it for the right reasons otherwise you will always end up doubting yourself keep on asking 10 people for their opinions because you don't have an opinion of your own right and all these are dangerous places to be because they will not help you with your preparation but they will interfere with your mind okay so now now we come to the uh, interesting bit or what i personally find interesting 
Yeah. Uh, it's basically the resources that we have. So I have I have uh, eliminated some of the resources considering that you have a limited time frame. If this were CAT 21, uh, then I would be covering a lot more resources. But yes, considering that we have what four months to go now, uh, I have kept the resources to a bare minimum. But anyway, uh, so VARC, if you look at it, as you saw, there are uh, three sections. The first section is VARC. What all kinds of questions do you get? You get reading comprehension passages, one passage followed by four, five, six questions, depending on the year, depending on the nature of the test. Uh, but the passage will generally be 700, 800, 1000 wordish, right? Uh, so those many words you have to read and you have to answer those questions. Then you have jumbled paragraphs. There will be four or five sentences that will be given to you. They can be unscrambled to form a coherent paragraph, but they will be scrambled, obviously. So you have to make sense of these jumbled paragraphs. You have to rearrange them so that they form a logically consistent paragraph. That is your jumbled paragraphs, also called para jumbles. Okay, yeah, that part I will uh, answer. Uh, working professional next four months, so I'll answer that bit towards the end. So there is a timeline. You might want to wait till then. Okay. Uh, then you have something called as the odd sentence. So odd sentence essentially means that there will be four statements given to you, three of which can be rearranged to form a paragraph. There is one statement that is out of context. So we have to figure out which is the odd sentence out of the four that we have. Paragraph summary again. Paragraph, four alternative summaries. You will have to figure out which summary is the best out of the four that would have been given. Right. Uh, there are additional topics like grammar, vocabulary, critical reasoning, which are important from the perspective of non-CAT exams. So ZAT, SNAP, IFT, SNAP, and MAT. Uh, testnet, mycat, CET, CMAT, MAT, ATMA, all these tests that are there. Uh, grammar, vocabulary, critical reasoning will be important from the perspective of these tests. It does not appear, appear directly at the CAT, but of course, if you know your grammar, you can figure out which statement comes earlier, which statements come, uh, comes later. You might want to use the concepts of tenses, let's say, for example. You might want to use the concept of uh, pronoun antecedent, let's say, for example. Right? You might want to use the concept of parallelism, let's say, for example. So all these things will come under grammar. Uh, vocabulary, again, you might not need vocabulary for syn uh, synonyms and antonyms when it comes to the cat, but you will need to have a good hold on vocabulary when it comes to reading those passages. Because if you look at at least the last couple of years of RC, uh, the passages have been very difficult to read because they explore concepts like imperialism, democracy and again it's not democracy and imperialism in the context that you know of it's very dense so what happened when the british came to india what was the first thing that they changed what was the second thing that they changed how exactly did they change the uh, socio cultural environment right so all these kind of things are there and these are difficult things to read so that's why you need to have a good hold on vocabulary you need to have a good hold on understanding a lot of concepts critical reasoning will involve strengthening weakening and argument uh, will help you in debating, right? You have to build analogies. You have to uh, understand what the profession of the author is in a way by understanding these arguments. So that is basically where your critical reasoning will come into the picture when it comes to solving your reading comprehension passages, right? What all resources are there? So in in terms of specialization, so I'm just saying that you have to read and also you have to look at it in terms of what you want to do ahead in your life. So these are the list or this is the list of books that I would recommend if you are not very clear about your specialization or you want to explore specializations. So made to stick stories at work. We'll talk about communication, marketing, right? Uh, brand journeys. That is what made to stick stories at work. We'll talk about. Then there's this book called Super Pump, which is one of my favorites. It talks about the journey of Uber, right? Uh, how Travis Kalanick built Uber from scratch. What all roadblocks did they face? What kind of ethical dilemmas did they face and whether what they did was morally right or wrong? So there are a lot of questions there. So you might want to uh, read that, uh, especially if you are planning to become an entrepreneur, right? Uh, there is another book called No Rules Rules, uh, which talks about the work culture or the things that Netflix does. Again, something that you might want to read. Right? Uh, then finance books, The Smartest Guys in the Room is a good book. It talks about the Enron scandal. Uh, there is a Warren Buffett accounting book for all of you who are who come from a non-commerce, non-management background. Uh, you might want to read Warren Buffett accounting book before you join your college. Although the accounting standards are different, even then you might gain a lot of insights. Uh, people who are into personal finance and investing, 
Uh, there's this book called Let's Talk Money by uh, Monica Halan. A very good book. If you want to start investing, if you want to uh, develop uh, what uh, good habits when it comes to managing personal finances. Uh, there is this book called The Psychology of Money. Again, very well written book. Very nice book. You might want to read that. Uh, so all these books are there. That will help you with your internet specialization. Six Sigma way for operations. A McKinsey way for people who want to get into consulting. Uh, measure what matters for people who might want to explore HR. Right. So all these books are there. Uh, you might want to just check them out. Read the reviews of these books on Goodreads if you feel like. And then you can download by whatever, whichever way you're comfortable. And just start reading these things. All right. It will help you get a good idea of what is expected from a profession. It will make you feel excited about doing something. That is the important bit. Right. Then in terms of subject knowledge, uh, there are again few more books and resources, right? People who are very bad at math, who have no idea what to do when a question comes in front of you. Uh, there is this book called The Joy of X. There is another book called Math with Bad Drawings. But The Joy of X is one of my favorites because it will help the weakest math student understand the fundamentals of math. It's not in the form of question, answer, theory, theorem, proof. No, right? It's it's in a in a form of uh, a fun novel, right? In a way, right? Uh, so you basically have concepts that are explained to you by drawing charts, by in in terms of funny anecdotes, right? So that is basically how that book has been presented. It's a very nice book. You might want to explore it. It's a very short book. It's not very. Uh, it's not huge. It's not a five hundred page book. It's a very nice short book that you can read once. Uh, you will start looking at math in a slightly different manner. Then there's another nice book called How Charts Like for people who are not good with data. Obviously, as an MBA, you will be dealing with charts day in and day out. So make sure that you are also uh, good at understanding charts, how charts lie, very important. Uh, Eats, Shoots and Leaves is a good book on grammar. So without becoming too pedantic, uh, it explains grammatical rules uh, by using funny examples, right? So Eats, Shoots and Leaves is a uh, play on words, right? So eats, shoots, and leaves. And eats, shoots, and leaves. There are two ways of saying that thing. So it's an Oxford comma that is being spoken about. So you might want to read that book. It's a very nice, again, it's a very short book. Uh, then you have the usual suspects. Word power made easy, right? Norman Lewis, everyone's favorite. Uh, it will help you develop your vocabulary, but it cannot be the be all and end all of vocabulary, right? You will have to get good habits from word power made easy, which is looking at the roots of words, language of origin, stories behind words, and then go deeper and explore other words similarly. Norman Lewis has also written another book called How to Read Better and Faster, uh, which talks about speed reading techniques. Uh, the good thing is IMS already has a session on speed reading. So your second or third session, I believe, is going to be on speed reading techniques, um, which will help you read fast. There are some techniques that you can use to read quicker. Right? Um, Norman Lewis explains these techniques in a 500 page book. And if you have read what power made easy, you will know the kind of font that Norman Lewis uses. So it will be slightly painful. Right? Uh, in terms of news, again, you are the best judge. Uh, Gitesh, I'm not sure of this. Just get in touch with the person who scheduled this for you uh, from where you got the link to this video. And I, I think they will have a way to share this bit. Right. Um, so, uh, in terms of news, you can you can explore any of the resources that you are comfortable with, uh, starting from Times of India, Economic Times, Mint, Hindustan Times, Indian Express, The Hindu, Business Standard, uh, New York Times, Guardian. There are a lot of newspapers that are published. Right. Uh, I would suggest these newspapers, especially if you are not into reading other stuff, because these are better curated, better edited. Right. At Times of India will not be the best edited newspaper. It will give you all the news. I'm not denying that fact, but it might not be the best edited page. Right? So these papers are fairly well edited. Uh, if you look at the editorials and all, you will find very few spelling mistakes, very few grammatical errors. Plus you will be able to build your vocabulary as well, right? because the language used is very good. <clears throat> right? So you can use one or many of these. So the Hindu, Aeon, AL Daily, NYT, Bloomberg, and the like. Uh, now, what happens is generally what we do is uh, uh, whenever you get added to a program, you will be added to a group, a telegram group, wherein your faculty will also be a part of it. And you will basically interact in terms of, let's say, asking doubts 
or uh, if there is a quiz or something the faculty will float it on the group right uh, what we do is i think six days a week except sundays um, the faculty will share one article from one of these sources and there will be some five or six words for which you will have to uh, answer the synonyms right uh, so those kind of things happen so there you will see a lot of articles being uh, shared but on your own also you can explore these articles all these are like very nice places from where you can read news um, and explore topics right then thesaurus all about words again something that you should have handy you should be in the habit of referring to a thesaurus every now and then uh, whenever you come across a word that does not make a lot of sense to you right uh, all about words is a book similar to what power made easy so again if you are very keen on reading something in addition to what power made easy then all about words helps uh, daily writing tips is a blog which you might want to explore it talks about the differences between um, very minute things like that versus which as versus since uh, the the spelling of minuscule let's say for example so a lot of us feel that the spelling of minuscule is m i n i s c u l e but the the original spelling was m i n u s c u l e minus so the the uh, the root is not mini it's minus right so anyway doesn't matter so all these things are there on your daily writing tips uh, wherein uh, there will be a lot of uh, fun stuff that will be shared right so you might want to uh, look at that uh, the last bit is basically the contemporary sources uh, blinkist is one thing that i generally recommend uh, because it it will give you one non fiction article or no one non fiction book in a condensed form every day for free right so you will have 12 minute 15 minute blinks in which an entire book will be summarized if you like the book you can buy it download it read it right that you can do but every day you can maybe have a listen to these blinks that we get right good reads is a good resource because you will get a lot of lists you can follow a lot of people understand what people are reading and if something makes sense obviously you you start reading that bit right uh, they have a reading challenge as well if you want to stay particularly motivated right Uh, i am also there on good reads you might want to follow me as well okay uh, then there is audible which is uh, essentially again a resource by amazon uh, it's a paid thing so there are uh, audio books that are the new norm in a way so if you are uh, working on something and you want to passively listen to a book then you can download audible you can download audio books and you can listen to these audio books so that is basically what it looks like okay komal that is the next slide so lrdi overview there are two major types of questions that you get in terms of lrdi one is logical reasoning wherein there will be no numbers or very few numbers and there is data interpretation wherein you will have data in the form of numbers right so the questions range from normal arrangements five people sitting in a straight line right to critical path 10 ways of doing a thing which is the most optimum way games and tournaments binary logic truth teller liar those kind of questions data interpretation is essentially tables bar graphs pie charts and the like right and mathematical reasoning will involve some element of math it is not going to be core mathematical uh, concepts but some element of math that will be right uh, in terms of resources if you look at lrdi resources one thing you have to understand is you have to target this number 400 religiously right what do i mean by target 400 you have to solve 400 quality sets before you appear for cat 2021 right now i understand there are only 120 days left which means that an average of what three and a half four sets every day but that is something that needs to be done okay that is something that needs to be done uh, because unless you solve those many good sets it's very difficult for you to crack the 401st set because cat will not repeat any set from any source it's, it's a rarity to see a set being lifted directly from any source that you would have studied that is why you have to diversify as much as you can you have to have a good range right so how do you target 400 you basically look at questions from or sets from simcats that is going to be the best source for you to prepare your lrdi so simcats is one thing then you have your sectional tests you will have past cat papers which are again good indicators you will have sets from your practice exercises you will have sets from your class exercises so everything is a part of your material right uh, if you if you basically uh, do everything that has been offered to you from ims's end i am sure that you will be able to do a very good job when it comes to the actual test right uh, because uh, i'll tell you the extent of material so a uh, material that is there so i have 
taught classroom for two years. Out of two and a half years, two years I have been taking batches, right? And I have not explored the entirety of the material till now. Now that is because of a lot of other reasons as well. I have other commitments as well, but I have not been able to go through the entire uh, set of uh, material that you have, right? So you can understand the extent of material that you have. 400 sets is what I'm expecting. Okay. Uh, in terms of logical puzzles, make sure that you know the puzzles that I have mentioned here. Yes, or it does. I'll, I'll explain it to you. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, so you have logical puzzles as well. Uh, so Sudoku, Kakuro, Kakurasu, Hitori. We have seen applications of these puzzle types at the actual CAT in many of the years preceding this. Right. So if you have a good hold on logical puzzles, you will be able to draw parallels when it comes to question types. So although you might not be able to say that, okay, this is exactly the question that I have seen earlier, you will be able to establish a callback. If you show me a chess puzzle, I will tell you that, okay, this is similar to a puzzle that appeared in CAT 2017 afternoon slot. That gives me confidence. That tells me that, okay, this is something that I have seen earlier. Whenever stuff is familiar to you, you will find it easier to do. Right? So make sure that you establish familiarity with a lot of question types. And this is basically going to help you. For other books that offer cat level puzzles or even deeper puzzles, you might want to have a look at this book called The Great Book of Puzzles and Teasers by George Summers. It's a rather complicated book. The puzzles are very difficult sometimes, right? But it will tell you how to make cases, how to not pull your hair out, right? So all those kind of things will be, uh, we will, you will be able to understand these things once you solve puzzles from this book. Then there are books by Shakuntala Devi, uh, Puzzles to Puzzle You, More Puzzles to Puzzle You. So all these books are by Shakuntala Devi. Again, good puzzle books that you might want to explore. Right? But if you want to explore cat level puzzles, there isn't going to be a better resource than some cats and past cat papers. These are going to be the best resources that you would have access to. Right? In terms of apps, again, if you want to build a logical reasoning habit, and when, do I, when I mean a logical reasoning habit, it basically means getting rid of, let's assume A sits at B and then see what happens. Laga to laga, tukka, nahi laga to gone. Right? That is not the attitude with which you sit to solve an LRD I sit. Right. So make sure that you are doing everything in a scientific manner. If A sits at two different places, make sure that A is, you are drawing two different diagrams for that. So that is a habit that you want to get into. That is why these puzzles help. Right. So in terms of apps, you have Elevate, Lumosity, 2048, Unblock Me. There are a lot of other puzzle apps that you have. Right. So you might want to explore these. Again, five minutes, 10 minutes, every day if you spend on one of these apps, I think it's going to be good. In terms of quant, you have five areas. Again, arithmetic is uh, percentages, ratios, averages, right? Things that you have done till your 10th standard and the topics that are, uh, again, uh, adjuncts to this, right? So uh, profit and loss, uh, let's say weighted averages, mixtures, allegations, um, time and work, time speed distance, simple interest, compound interest, variations. So all these are topics that are subparts of percentages, ratios, and averages. Right? So that will be your arithmetic. Algebra will be linear equations, quadratic equations, polynomials, functions, graphs, a bit of coordinate geometry as well, sequences, series. Right. So all these things will be algebra. Uh, geometry will be flat structured geometry. So lines and angles, triangles, quadrilaterals, polygons, circles. Right. Then mensuration, trigonometry a bit of coordinate geometry there as well, right? So that is basically how your geometry will work. Uh, there is not a lot of trigonometry, so don't worry about trigonometry if you are scared of it already. Uh, it's not a big part of geometry. Uh, number theory will involve uh, LCM, HCF, divisibility rules, uh, factorials, base systems, divisions. So all these things will be covered under numbers. And then modern math. Modern math is essentially permutations, combinations, probability, set theory. So all these things will classify under modern math. Right? So again, if you look at it, arithmetic will contribute to some 40, 45, 50% of your text. Algebra will contribute to another 20%. Geometry will contribute to another 20%. So if you are really bad at quant, the first thing that you will attack is going to be arithmetic. The next thing that you can attack is going to be algebra. The next thing that you can attack is going to be geometry. Right. So make sure that you are following it in this sequence. Don't get attached to numbers because everybody is discussing numbers. No, that is not how things work. Okay. In terms of resources, uh, there is a speed math booklet that you are going to get as a part of your courseware. 
So that is something that you might want to refer to to improve your calculation speed. Although you will generally, you are generally going to have a speed math session, right? Uh, as as one of the initial few sessions. So the techniques that will be discussed in that session are going to be decent enough for you to uh, do well at DCAT, right? The booklet covers a lot more than what will be covered in that session. But then it com it's completely up to you as to what is it that you want to cover. Right. There is a formula booklet and an interesting questions repository that you will have to do on your own. Right. This is basically something that you have to do consciously on your own so that you have something to study. from. This is your notes. Right. So whenever you come across an interesting formula, just take a screenshot of it, put it in the form of a PPT and keep on looking at that PPT. Every two, three days, every night, if you feel like, right, just look at that PPT, appreciate the beauty of that formula. Don't get into the nitty gritties of it. How was it proved? What are the questions that I saw? No, just look at the formula, appreciate it. Just try to see if you're able to recall. This is a part of repetition. Interesting questions repository. Whenever you come across a, a question that you find interesting, right? Just take a screenshot, put it in the PPT. If you are good at writing, you might want to maintain a notebook as well, but I have found that or it's not like uh, mighty knowledge, but yes, it's difficult to write stuff. now. Right? Uh, so uh, taking a screenshot is much easier at least in today's day and world right uh, so make sure that you are maintaining a repository of these questions as well and again i'm not saying that sit and solve each and every question every day just look at a question appreciate why that question made it to your interesting questions repository talk to yourself okay this question was very interesting because it involved this concept because there was this bit of calculation that i got stuck in try to recall where you went wrong Right. If you keep on doing these things day in, day out, I'm sure you will be able to build a nice repository of 200, 300, 400, 500 questions, and you will basically be able to do well, right? Overall, or you'll be able to establish better recall in terms of uh, content and in terms of knowledge, right? Uh, in terms of apps, there are some apps that you might want to explore, especially if you are not very good at calculation. So there is this app called Math Puzzle, wherein uh, you will be calculating a lot of uh, things. It's a very simple interface uh, app. Uh, all this you can find on the Android Play Store, Google Play Store. So you might want to explore these apps. Obviously, if there is some other app that you find interesting, you can do that as well. These are very lightly coded apps. They are not very advanced apps, uh, basic apps that you might want to try out. So it's called Math Puzzle. One is called Math Workout. Another is called Brain Training. Right. So all these apps are decent enough to improve your calculations. Okay. Now, in general, what do you need to do? So you need to spend three hours of preparation per day. So um, Saurabh, right, Who was asking me about it. Saurabh, yeah. So Saurabh asked me about uh, work ex professionals. So irrespective of whether you are a working professional, uh, a final year student, or someone who is not doing anything has taken a gap for cat, which I would not recommend, but still. Three hours of preparation in general is going to be decent. Now, how do you get these three hours is very important. Right. I will not tell you that, okay, 7.30 to 10.30 is basically when you should study because it's very difficult in today's day and age to get three hours at a stretch irrespective of whatever it is that you are doing. It's very difficult to sit at one place for three hours and prepare. Right. Almost invariably, you are going to get 15 minutes or 30 minutes slots that are spread throughout the day. So instead of thinking of three hours, think of it as six slots of 30 minutes each or 12 slots of 15 hours each, uh, 15 minutes each. Sorry. Right. That is basically how you should think of things. Now, what do you do in this slot is basically these things. 30 minutes of reading. Now, you might want to read first thing in the morning because if you plan to read before you go to sleep, you will go to sleep. You will not read at all. It's something that I can tell you almost surely unless you are an avid reader. Right. So, half an hour of reading, you might want to keep it earlier in the day. 15 minutes solving puzzles. You are waiting for the session to begin. Spend those 15 minutes solving puzzles. You are waiting for a friend to arrive. You are waiting for a meeting to start. Right? You are commuting. Use those 15 minutes to solve puzzles. Don't keep those puzzles for later in the day when you are preparing as well. Right? 15 minutes working on calculations. Make it a point to do these things day in and day out. You get 15 minutes. You get 30 minutes ka lunch break. Have your lunch in 15 minutes. Solve calculation based questions in 15 minutes. Right. And two hours every day for RC, VA, LR, DI, QA section. Now, how do you understand? Yeah, Abhishek, it's okay. You are having a class of 2.5 hours daily while working. It becomes difficult. But then 
you know what you are signing up for, right, Abhishek? There, there are certain things that I'm sure you will be able to get rid of. Okay. Chalo, not three hours every day. Try to club those three hours. Weekends, if you get free, sit on weekends. One day, don't work. And you cannot be attached to a company so much that you don't take leaves. You can always fall sick. You can always take your allotted leaves. Don't keep your leaves for the end. Cat ke baat party karenge will not work. Okay. So uh, make sure that you are not showing unnecessary allegiance to your organization as well. Uh, if you want to get out of the organization, it has to happen in a phased manner. Right. So make sure that you are creating time for yourself. Right. Don't work beyond a certain point in time. Don't take calls. People will get annoyed. Let them get annoyed. You are looking at the bigger picture. Right. So make sure that you have these three hours per day, 15 hours every week. So worst case, if you're not able to figure time out, 15 hours every week is again not a very difficult thing to do. Sleep for one hour less, one hour, one and a half hours less than what you would otherwise. There, there have to be some sacrifices that have to be made, especially if you have four months to go for the test. Right? So I'm sure you will be able to figure this out. Write down what you are doing every hour in a day. Seven to eight, what is it that you're doing? Eight to nine, what is it that you're doing? Nine to 10, what is it that you're doing? I'm sure you will be able to find three hours along with your sessions. Okay. Yeah, Dhruv, it's completely up to you. So what needs to be done in these two hours is you have to plan at the beginning of the week. Right. It's always a good idea to plan stuff at the beginning of the week. How do you plan at the beginning of the week? Let's say you're sitting on a Sunday today and trying to figure out what your plan is going to look like for the entire week ahead of you. Right. So what happens as a part of this plan is you figure out which are the topics that you want to tackle in a particular week. What are the questions that you want to tackle in a particular week? And then you work on those things accordingly. So you might want to do RC on one day, RCVA on one day, let's say, quant on the next day, LRDI on one day, quant on the next day, again, RCVA on one day, quant on the next day. You might want to do it like that because quant is generally going to take 50% of your time. So make sure that you're allotting your days in terms of your preparation as well. Some people are really good at doing one thing on a particular day and not getting bogged down by other things, other sections. So you might want to do QA on one day itself. If you are someone who prefers a bit of, or you might want to spice things up a bit, you might want to do two or three sections every day. Even that is perfectly okay. But the split should ideally be 50, 25, 25. 50% of your time should go to quant, 25% to verbal, 25% to LRD. Uh, Saurabh, yes, three hours exclusive to coaching class time. Now, if you are doing something worthwhile in your coaching class time as well, then obviously that two hours can be adjusted there. But I would suggest that whenever you are sitting for a session, make sure that you have watched the concept videos, make sure that you have gone through the theory part of things before you sit for the session. So overall, I'm talking about five years of preparation every day, four and a half to five years of preparation. If you have a session on that day as well. So these two hours can also include preparing for the session that you're going to attend. So everything included is two hours on an average. And again, these are not sacrosanct numbers. If you want to invest three hours, invest three hours. Not, not, it's not a problem. If you feel like you will be decently, uh, you will be at a decent level in spite of investing one hour, do that. Not a problem at all. Okay. Yeah. If you have three hours on the days that I give mocks, again, if you it depends on your bandwidth. If you have three hours to give on the day that you take a mock, go for it. Otherwise, mock will also count as prep. It's prep in general. I'm not differentiating between mocks and uh, non mocks. Okay. So if you are taking a mock and then you don't have any time left after that, then I'm not expecting you to take a mock for three hours, prepare for three hours, then sit for a session for three hours is not what I'm expecting. Right? Three hours mock prep is basically uh, what you are going to start. Okay. Now in terms of timelines, uh, July, August, mid of September, assuming that you join now, your sessions will go until mid September, end September at least. Right. Uh, so that is basically the time that you will spend building your concepts or section level awareness. So at the moment, if someone has taken CAT and if I ask you, let's say, uh, what was your performance like or what was your experience like, uh, people will generally dwell on section level awareness. They might want to talk a bit about, okay, which section was the one that was the uh, toughest, which section was the one that they found the easiest and so on. Right. You have to migrate from section level awareness to topic level awareness. Not the entirety of maths is going to be your enemy, right? Not the entirety of verbal is going to be your friend. You have to understand which topics are there that you are good at, which topics are not, you are not so good at, 
that will take you to a 95th percentile. And finally, if you want to reach the 99th percentile, that will basically happen once you have question level awareness, whether to attempt a particular question or not. That is basically going to be the strategy side of things. So if you look at the overall thing, uh, you have to look at your theory from your modules, concept videos, class exercises, practice exercises. This will basically take care of your concept. As far as application goes, practice module in your my IMS tab, workshops, e-maximizer workshops that you will have, master classes <coughs> that you will have. Again, uh, there are ongoing master classes. There will be another round of master classes later. Uh, past CAT papers, sectional tests, all these things are going to help you with your application. And obviously, SIM cards would have started right now, but you might want to slightly sit on take home SIM cards till the time you finish a majority of your syllabus. So that is basically what I'm going for here. Take the proctored SIM cards as per the timelines, but whatever are the unproctored or the take home tests that you have, take those tests once you are done with one round of syllabus. That is what I would recommend. Okay. So this is basically what your timelines would be. Fine. Uh, as far as the programs go, right? So there are uh, a couple of programs that are there. So one is a catapult, bl catapult blended classroom program, wherein uh, you will have everything in the form of a classroom. Now I understand that not a lot of cities are open to conducting classes. None of the cities are open to conducting classes. So as and when your classroom start, yeah, Monica, is there something that you want to say? Okay, so uh, this is basically something that will have a classroom side of things and an online side of things, right? Uh, eCatapult Live again has a lot of sub programs. So there is an eCatapult Live program which is on same lines as the blended classroom program, wherein you will go through uh, one end of the preparation to the other, right? You will start from the very basics and you will go throughout the entire preparation. There is a focused program wherein it's a, a flipped classroom model, wherein you are essentially solving questions and doing theory on your own. So you will learn the theory from your concept videos that would be shared before the session and you will come prepared for the session. And then you will sit and take that session or, or we'll solve questions during that session. That is a focus program. So if you go to imsindia.com slash cat, you will be able to see all the program details that I have put. Right. You also have SIM cards that are present and you also have a self-learning program called the eCatapult, which you again might want to explore. Right. Now, these are my coordinates. Uh, I'll have five minutes of Q&A, right? And uh, then if you have any further doubts, if there is something that you need to know uh, beyond whatever we have discussed, uh, you can just reach out to me on my mail ID. So it's shashang.prabhu at the rate imsindia.com. Uh, you can also drop me a connection request at LinkedIn. Just mention that you were a part of uh, this session so that I know uh, from where are you coming from, right? Uh, so that is basically my LinkedIn ID. I'm also there on Goodreads. So I mentioned about books. So those of you who want to read more relevant books, want to develop a good reading habit, you can follow me on Goodreads as well. Um, so I, I generally read books that are relevant to cat prep or in general uh, will be helpful to a lot of you. Uh, so I read some interesting stuff. Uh, so you can follow me there. You can also follow my answers on Quora. Right. So I have written answers on Quora uh, way back as well. So some of the questions that you might come across, you might find those answers on Quora. Right. Apart, I'm not sure of the recording. So uh, whoever, so the session is being recorded. So one thing is, yes, the session is being recorded. The second thing is, if you want to access the recording, you might want to get in touch with the person who shared the link with you. Right. So get in touch with that person. They will help you with the link. Uh, and then you might be able to watch the record. Yeah. Akshitish, again, same thing. Uh, whoever got in touch with you regarding this session will get back in touch uh, with you regarding the batches that will be starting for CAT and seed. Okay. So all of you who are, who are in this session will mostly get a call back right? uh, from someone who is taking care of admission. So one of the education advisors will get in touch with you over the next couple of days, I believe. So uh, you can discuss the batch starting date. So it depends on your city. Which city are you planning to? So this is a pan India session. So it depends on which city you are coming from. Uh, when are the relevant batches being floated? So it depends on all those things. So you can have a discussion with uh, uh, whoever gets in touch with you and you can take it from there. All right. Okay. So if. 
yeah poonam it's decent enough whatever you are doing is decent enough it's it's a good thing to have so basically you need to have four or five spikes on your cv uh, through which you can answer questions or build experiences right so that is basically what we are looking at so whatever you have uh, done right it it seems fine to me okay yeah uh, four months you have to practice difficult questions and take mocks yes you are open to do that so see uh, just to share uh, when i was preparing for cat uh, uh, as in during my time this was what 2010 11 um, i focused almost exclusively on mocks because my concepts were all in place i was not worried about building concepts at all so what i did was i focused exclusively on mocks theek okay. hai uh lehri uh, it's not a preference as such if there is a cut off there is a cut off so they will not prefer one person over the other if they receive the same marks they will prefer both of them so if they have said that the cut off is 99.53 then whoever is at 99.53 will end up getting a call punam you can start with arithmetic algebra geometry and see if you have bandwidth left for uh, pn um, modern math and numbers ठीक है रोहित डेफिनेटली यस यस डेफिनेटली पॉसिबल यू हैव टू हैव अ स्ट्रेटजी दैट्स इट यू कैन जस्ट सिट फॉर 4 टू 5 आवर्स अ डे एब्सेंट माइंडेडली एंड डू रैंडम थिंग्स दैट विल नॉट वर्क ओके आई सी आई विल टेक अ कपल मोर क्वेश्चंस लेट्स सी इप्शिता या इप्शिता यू माइट वांट टू फोकस अ बिट मोर ऑन मॉक्स या इट माइट be who you feel are taking more marks compared to learning more theory you can just do patchwork in terms of the additional theory bit that you need theek hai sopnil yes uh, why not if the situation improves drastically then yes we can expect a 3 hour cat but uh, i would probably be looking at a 2 hour cat yeah abhishek uh, yes abhishek in most cases yes they will but then if you have a compelling reason then you might uh, be able to make it but again you look at the uh, selection criteria for the iams that i mentioned in almost all the cases your so 10th and 12th standard marks will be considered okay chalo i'll take one or two more questions if there's anything you just drop me a mail i'll respond on the mail uh, by tomorrow or day after yeah uh sunil yes definitely possible i'm not saying it's impossible just take a diagnostic test just take a mock test and see where you are and then you will be able to understand what your prospects are but yes definitely it's possible okay chalo cool so i hope uh, uh, you like the session i hope you uh, had fun attending the session yeah so i i hope to see more of you when i'm doing a master class or when i'm doing a sipcat analysis or something yeah and uh, i hope all of you do well at the cat so stay motivated prepare well and i i will uh, i hope to see more of you soon okay Sure. Okay. Bye, everyone. Take care. Stay safe, and uh, I'll close the session now.